but I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I got to see the last case of killer smallpox in the world. I was in India this past year, and I may have seen the last cases of polio in the world. There's nothing that makes you feel more the blessing and the honor of working in a program like that than to know that something that horrible no longer exists. So I'm going to tell So I'm going to show you some dirty pictures. They are difficult to watch, but you should look at them with optimism because the horror of these pictures will be matched by the uplifting quality of knowing that they no longer exist. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my own journey. My background is not exactly the conventional medical education that you might expect. When I was an intern in San Francisco, I, was, I heard about a group of Native Americans who had taken over Alcatraz Island and a Native American who wanted to give birth on that island, and no other doctor wanted to go and help her give birth. I went out to Alcatraz, and I lived on the island for several weeks. She gave birth, I caught the baby, I got off the island, I landed in San Francisco, and all the press wanted to talk to me because my three weeks on the island made me an expert in Indian affairs. I wound up on every television show. Someone saw me on television, they called me up and they asked me if I'd like to be in the movie and to play a young doctor for a bunch of rock and roll stars who were traveling in a bus ride from San Francisco to England, and I said, yes, I would do that. So I became the doctor in an absolutely awful movie called Medicine Ball Caravan. Now, you know from the 60s, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. I was on the bus. My wife and I of 37 years joined the bus. Our bus ride took us from San Francisco to London. We switched buses at the Big Pond. We, uh, we, we then got on two more buses, and we drove through Turkey and Iran and Afghanistan over the Khyber Pass into Pakistan, like every other young doctor. This is us at the Khyber Pass, and that's our bus. We had some difficulty getting over the Khyber Pass, but we wound up in India. And then, like everyone else in our generation, we went to live in a Himalayan monastery. <laughs> this is just like a residency program for those of you that are in medical school. <laughs> and we studied with a wise man, our guru Neem Karoli Baba, who then told me to get rid of the dress, put on a three-piece suit, go join the United Nations as a diplomat, and work for the World Health Organization. And he made an outrageous prediction that smallpox would be eradicated. And this was God's gift to humanity because of the hard work of dedicated scientists. And that prediction came true. And this little girl is Rahima Banu, and she was the last case of killer smallpox in the world. And this document is the certificate that the Global Commission signed certifying the world to have eradicated the first disease in history. The key to eradicating smallpox was early detection, early response. I'm going to ask you to repeat that. Early detection, early response. Can you say that? Early detection, early response. Smallpox was the worst disease in history. It killed more people than all the wars in history. In the last century, it killed 500 million people. More than two, you're, you're reading about Larry Page already. Somebody reads very fast. In the year that Larry Page and Sergey Brin, with whom I have a certain affection and a new affiliation, in the year in which they were born, two million people died of smallpox. We declared smallpox eradicated in 1980. This is the most important slide that I've ever seen in public health because it shows you to be the richest and the strongest and to be kings and queens of the world did not protect you from dying of smallpox. Never can you doubt that we are all in this together. But to see smallpox from the perspective of a sovereign is the wrong perspective. You should see it from the perspective of a mother watching her child develop this disease and standing by helplessly. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. You're a mother and you're watching your child. And on day six, 
you see pustules that become hard. Day seven, they show the classic scars of smallpox and bellication, day eight. And Al Gore said earlier that the most photographed image in the world, the most printed image in the world was that of the earth. But this was in 1974, and as of that moment, this photograph was the photograph that was the most widely printed, because we printed two billion copies of this photograph, and we took them hand to hand, door to door, to show people and ask them if there was smallpox in their house, because that was our surveillance system. We didn't have Google, we didn't have web crawlers, we didn't have computers. By day nine, you look at this picture and you're horrified. I look at this picture and I say, thank God, because it's clear that this is only an ordinary case of smallpox, and I know this child will live. And by 13, day 13, the lesions are scabbing, his eyelids are swollen, but you know this child has no other secondary infection. And by day 20, while he will be scarred for life, he will live. There are other kinds of smallpox that are not like that. This is confluent smallpox, in which there isn't a single place on the body where you could put a finger and not be covered by lesions. Flat smallpox, which killed 100% of people who got it. And hemorrhagic smallpox, the most cruel of all, which had a predict predilection for pregnant women. I've probably had 50 women die. They all had hemorrhagic smallpox. I've never seen anybody die from it who wasn't a pregnant woman. In 1967, the WHO embarked on what was an outrageous program to eradicate a disease. In that year, there were 34 countries affected with smallpox. By 1970, we were down to 18 countries. 1974, we were down to five countries. But in that year, smallpox exploded throughout India. And India was the place where smallpox made its last stand. In 1974, India had a population of 600 million. There are 21 linguistic states in India, which is like saying 21 different countries. The two, 20 million people on the road at any time, in buses and trains, walking, 500,000 villages, 120 million households, and none of them wanted to report if they had a case of smallpox in their house because they thought that smallpox was the visitation of a deity, Shitalama, the cooling mother, and it was wrong to bring strangers into your house when the deity was in the house. No incentive to report smallpox. It wasn't just India that had smallpox deities. Smallpox deities were prevalent all over the world. So how we eradicated smallpox was max vaccination wouldn't work. You could vaccinate everybody in India, but one year later there'd be 21 million new babies, which was then the population of Canada. It wouldn't do just to vaccinate everyone. You'd find every single case of smallpox in the world at the same time and draw a circle of immunity around it. And that's what we did. In India alone, my 150,000 best friends and I went door to door with that same picture. To every single house in India, we made over one billion house calls. And in the process, I learned something very important. Every time we did a house-to-house -house search, we had a spike in the number of reports of smallpox.